Firstly, I am delighted uh, to be in conversation with you today. Uh, it's been a long time coming, actually, to have done this interview. And I'm just so glad that you could take the time out today to speak with me. So firstly, a huge welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Well, I think uh, congratulations, first of all, for winning uh, the best screenplay of Sir at the Filmfare Awards. I was absolutely delighted uh, when I got the news and I'm sure you must have been delighted too, right? Thank you. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Especially, um, I think the Screenplay Award is, 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 is really special for me because I, I consider myself a writer first. And, you know, uh, yeah. I've come to directing from writing. So it was, uh, it really meant a lot, you know. Absolutely. But, you know, I think Sir itself has been commemorated and loved by critics uh, worldwide and by audiences worldwide, not just in India. Had obviously the film just had um, an Indian release from the onset rather than going to the film festivals. Do you think the reception would have been different or do you think that would have changed it at all? Um, I don't think the reception in India would have been different. You know, um, I think in um, uh, each place, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think if I had released only in India, I would have lost the opportunity to see how international audiences respond. And that's right. been really interesting because for me, I actually made the film for India and I felt that, and, and the diaspora, people who I felt would connect to this sort of story, who would understand it in a more visceral way. But mm. I've been surprised to see that it's traveled uh, much beyond that, you know, yeah. and it's been accepted and it's connected with people on a very human level, much beyond cultural boundaries, which is really exciting for me. Um, to see that. But I think the response in India, like, you know, if you talk about, you know, awards that Tilo Thomas won or that we, that we won for film uh, for Filmfare or, or, you know, just, just the general response, the reviews, the love that it's gotten, whether on Netflix or, I mean, I think all of that is because it's, it's connecting to something. Right. Uh, and I don't think it's about uh, people looking to the West and saying, you know, oh, it's because it was celebrated internationally that we, you know, I think these are, these are separate things. And, and I think, um, I think we were lucky that we were able to get a little bit of attention for the film so it could stand out despite mm -hmm. not being a Netflix original or you know not having the benefit of that kind of push you know exactly. it's just, you know it's a film that just released without any song and dance but because we had done a theatrical despite the pandemic uh, because we had really uh, pushed you know mm. uh, before to just uh, and 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 uh, the reviews had been great and I think people were waiting for the film. So the audience really drove it and that's what's really exciting to me. Yeah, know? and it's not, and this is what I'm saying. And I think like even independent films like Sir as well, you know, it's very few lesser times when you have so much anticipation and so much excitement for an independent film. I mean, thankfully it's changing now, but that's yeah. also a great thing as well, isn't it? Absolutely. I think, um, well, so specifically for India, it's a bit complicated because sometimes you have to apologize for, you know, I like I found myself saying, look, yes, the film was at Cannes, but it's not a festival film, you know, because they have this sort of category that they bung you into and then they're like, oh, you're art house, you know, so it's going to be boring. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not, you know, please. Um, so so you're, you're trying to walk that line between uh, apologizing for being appreciated in the West and actually saying, you know, I'm not I'm not mainstream, but it can still be an enjoyable film. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think I think it's that it's walking that line, which which I, I think so was lucky that it got mm. noticed and got attention from everybody. Yeah. But I'm also really aware that it could have fallen between um, the chairs, you know, like we're not neither, we're neither art house nor Bollywood and we could have been nowhere. Uh, and I'm sure that there are a lot of wonderful films that, that do have that fate, you know, that don't get the kind of attention that we've gotten, but that deserve it. Absolutely. And I'm glad that Film Fair at least recognized her. I'm, I, I was very ecstatic about that. And I was really glad. In fact, I literally messaged to Lothmar as soon as I got the news. <laughs> I was so happy about it. Um, but I think also what I love about you, Roena, and what I find fascinating is about you, regardless of whether it's your work as a director or as a writer. I mean, as like, I've also realized how you seem to sort of explore the concept of love overcoming mm -hmm. all sort of social, economic, cultural barriers, as you did, I think, in your documentary, What's Love Got to Do With It? Um, so what draws you towards this theme in particular? Um, I don't know. I think uh, maybe I'm just a sucker for love stories. I like love stories. You know, <laughs> I think that it's, it's um, I think it's really, it's really important to look at what's, what's good in us, you know, and mm. I think that, um, you know, one can one can scoff at the idea of a love story or, or uh, romance films and things like that. But I think deep down, I think it's 
um, it's sort of what can also save us, right? Just mm. the kindness and the goodness in people, the decency in people, and and seeing other people's points of view. So when right. you say a love story, right? Like in the case of Sir, the reason I did it as a love story was because first of all, it makes the two people equal, more equal, right? Than right. if you were just doing like a, a you know, a, this sort of oppressor victim relationship. And in, so now, you know, if 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 you fall in love with somebody and that person uh, doesn't love you back, it doesn't matter what you have in your bank. Mm. If they don't love you back, they don't love you back, you know? And I, and I thought that makes them more equal. But also, I think when you fall in love with someone, it becomes very effortless to see their point of view. Right. Because mm. you you start to just see things, you know, you, you start to try to think for them or, you know, even if it's like, even if it's between equals, but you're like, oh, you know, at work, maybe you should do this. Maybe you can do that. You know, you're always thinking for the other person working with them and I think that that uh, that's very powerful to me the way that one can actually sh- change one's perspective and see the world differently and have the opportunity to see the world from somebody else's eyes you know yeah. maybe it's that very you know? well said and I'm uh, and I'm assuming that, that it's that sort of because the fact that you are a sucker for love stories I presume that's <laughs> what sort of drove you to make your first feature film debut directorial debut with sir right yeah, I mean, I think, no, uh, Sir, actually, the, it, it became a love story later on. I think this idea of um, a domestic worker and the person they work for, that relationship is something that has sort of lived, I've, I've lived with my whole life. You know, the question as to how we, how do we have this sort of intimacy and, and yet this distance and this literal sort of segregation, right? Like we're in the mm. 50s uh, America, you know, mm. uh, where, uh, but, but we live with it and we accept it. And that was troublesome. To, I mean, it was, it was hard for me to process as a child you know, right. and to come to terms with. So I think it, it, it's over a, uh, thinking of doing it as a love story is an idea that came much later, probably after my documentary, you know, thinking right. of, of love and, and, and life, you know, and living through things and thinking, you know, how do we choose, how do we decide to love who we love and how does that happen, you know? So, yeah. um, so it became a love story, this question of how, you know, the intimacy between two people in one apartment, you know, two worlds within one apartment. That's what was interesting to me. Right. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm going to use that to segue into my next question, actually, because I love your vision as a filmmaker. Um, and what I, what really uh, strike me uh, when I watch Sir is the way you use geographical landscapes to actually uh, highlight the social and economical division. I think there's one scene um, which I really loved is when I think Tai and Ratna are standing at the chat and they're mm-hmm. sort of talking about life and uh, all of that. And then at the background, all you can see is this bari bari imar, these big buildings that are standing tall, you know, which are signs of progress and wealth and all of that. Um, but yet here we are, you know, two women of the um, not so privileged backgrounds, you know, talking about life. And I thought that was interesting. But I think with a movie of like Sir, which is obviously made on a modest budget and it's made on simplicity, like the simplicity is its essence and it's, it's, it's that's the core of the film. How pivotal is it to use exterior locations and other such tropes to sort of um, enhance the cinematic impact of the film? Um, well, I think uh, I, I, nothing, nothing I did in the film was done, uh, it, it was not very calculated. It was not done to enhance cinematic impact or whatever. It was really done to try to, try to live with these people. And mm. for me, the uh, you often see her, you often see Ratna outdoors, out and about in a bazaar, in a market, yeah. or in a tailor shop, or in the bus. But she's always active, and in external open spaces, and mm. uh, in bright, bright lights and more color. And he's and and Ashwin, in contrast, is often in enclosed spaces. Yeah, you know? true. And I think all, all he's you know at the top of a building on his ivory tower, you know, so he's always in the sort of either in a gilded cage on his ivory tower. So I think for me, it was really about thematics that determined uh, the storytelling and the locations and things like that and um, even shooting in an apartment I thought it would not be very expensive but because I really wanted a South Bombay apartment of a certain type and right. uh, I wanted a veranda and it had to look out you know there were a lot of these things that we really we really fought for and uh, my producers helped me to get it and uh, you know um, <laughs> And the produ- production designer made it look a certain way, you know, all right. of that, all of that, I think even the spaces within the inner, the, uh, uh, of the apartment, even those are really crucial to the storytelling, mm. you know, the length, the corridor and how we elongated that corridor to create that sense of, you know, uh, distance, but also like the corridor is really crucial to how they I interact or that. don't, you yeah. know? So yeah. um, I think a lot of it, a lot of it was 
totally driven by the story. I mean, coming back to the fact that I'm a writer first, you know, everything oh, comes oh. from the characters and it's a completely character driven uh, story. So it really comes from them, you know, like she's out and about and he's not, you know, sure. and he's trapped. That's such a wonderful description. And I think I, I did kind of identify with a lot of those things that you just mentioned. But I, what I'm really, really curious and really fascinated by Verna, is when you're a writer and uh, when you're penning down a story or penning down the characters and then when you have to put that on screen, how challenging is that process? I mean, I'm sure it must be quite taxing, right? Because I guess you have a set sort of image of the characters and the, and the location. So how do you uh, sort of, progress in that uh during that whole uh entire journey from script to screen yeah so you know um what was I I to answer your question I was really nervous about it like I was really wondering how this was all going to come together and you know and at first I was putting together mood boards and I had an assistant who was trying to help me it was very early and but then once I got started to get my crew on board you know once I got the key people and we could actually start to collaborate it was just such an amazing experience because suddenly, you know, I knew what I wanted, but there were people who knew how to give me what I wanted and even to take huh. it to the next level, huh. you know? Right. Uh, so whether it's, you know, Dominique Collin, who's the, who's the cinematographer or Paul Son, who's the a production designer or, or, or makeup or hair, all of it, like all the details, costumes, you know, we were really working with a lot of detail, but they have, they have the tools at their disposal to give you the options, you know, because I'm like, no, I really want it this way. And then they could offer you that. So I think for me, um, moving from writing to di direction, I've realized that, you know, I've been doing the hardest part all this time, being mm. alone, <laughs> you know, in a room, <laughs> banging right. my head against the wall and trying to get, you know, get a script out. And actually the working with people and collaborating is just so much fun. You know, right. if you're lucky enough to have a great crew, which I did. Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, I think just speaking a bit more about you, we'll come back to Sarah in just a bit. But um, you know, I, I read up, I was researching before we um kind of yeah. did our interview, and I kind of read up that you never actually went to film school, right? No, no. Wow, it's pretty incredible, I must say. You're very <laughs> astute and very confident about what you would like to see on screen and um all of that. So I, I must say congratulations to you on that because I think that's fab, you know, to sort of have um, that ability. Um, well, thank you. But I, it, it was scary. Like, honestly, it's scary because you, you are always afraid of what you don't know. But I think having really support, a really supportive crew really, really helps. Right. And as I mentioned, because you did seem very confident as a filmmaker in Sir, what do you think con kind of contributes towards this confidence? And what films or what style of cinematic works are you most inspired by? Um, the confidence, I would say, comes from the, the, the screenplay knowing your knowing your characters Absolutely. and and I also I write and rewrite and I'm really sort of hard on myself during the writing process so I write it always and I take it apart and I put it back together many times hmm. so you know when you're when you're on set or when you're even in pre-production you know exactly you know your, you know what you want and you know why you want it it's not arbitrary yeah. you know right. so you're not just being a brat or you're not just being sort of uh, you know, an artist and saying, I want it, you know, you know why that's really important to the character, you know why it's really important to the story, that it has to be this way, you mm. know, and that, I think that gives you a lot of, maybe that's the reason that it, it was really clear to me, and I think uh, the script was extremely clear, and it, it it became very clear to everybody what we needed and how we were going to go about to get it, you know, right. and in terms of, um, I think in terms of films, I would say, um, I, I, I'm really drawn to films that kind of show, kind of have a, uh, that are very truthful, but with, but with a sort of heightened element of either beauty or fun or like, obviously there's, there's, um, there's Wong Kar Wai who I've referred to often when I, which, which was, who was an inspiration in the mood for love was a big inspiration for this film in terms of the tone and the textures. Mm. Um, but also someone like, um, Greta Gerwig with Lady Bird, okay. you know, mm. which is, very, very much uh, seems seems to have a lot of truth from the mm. from, from the character's point of view, but also it's just a, it's heightened in terms of fun, you know. Yeah. Um, so right. it's it's things like that that I find really really uh, inspiring. Sure. Yeah. It sounds very interesting. Um, and I think also whenever I speak with actors, you know, I, I do kind of 
pose this question because I feel like the world that we live in and the people that we meet can have a very long-term effect on us psychologically as well. Um, and I feel like whenever I've spoken to actors as well, they have kind of said that, yeah, they are, you know, they kind of absorb the world around them and the people mm -hmm. around them. Is that a same, the same thing for writers as well and directors too? Yeah, uh, I think so, for sure, for sure. I mean, I think... Uh, uh, I mean, in my case, I've lived in I've lived in many different places. Right. So um, I think it's it's definitely influenced me in many ways, which is why I feel like um, with with so, for instance, you know, I feel I have a sense of feeling, or even with what's love got to do with it, my documentary. There's a sense of being an insider and an outsider to that context. Yeah. You know, I know um, I know India really well. I've lived there most of my life, but I've also lived away enough that uh, that mm. I have a perspective on it. You know, so I. Uh, right. But definitely, I think it does influence you. And I think it's really important to also change your context from time to time to not get, yeah. you know, bogged down or, or sucked up into things that that just don't actually matter. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. And Indian cinema, I think, generally has come leaps and bounds. I feel um, since the dreary, like grim representations of widows, like, you know, I mean, mm. I think we've gone come so far since we've seen like a Kati Patang, for example, you know, um, and I think recent films like Sir and Paglet as well. Um, offer a sense of hope to wind widows in contemporary India, which is so fabulous to see. But I think besides uh, cinema, what do you think can kind of be done uh, to kind of provide a sense of positive and secure future to widows? Um, I guess uh, societal change on some level. I don't know how that could happen really for, for, for specifically for widows. I mean, I think that that's really imposed by uh it's very patriarchal fundamentally right yeah. so i think i think breaking down the patriarchy is is really important and that and that's not the direction that we're heading in currently you know mm. so i think i think there's a lot of work to be done in terms of uh you know for, for, but and, and even when you talk about domestic workers right just really really securing people's lives uh, having having laws having laws that are that are enforced you mm. know um I, as far as i know those things are not really done India, you know, I've not seen uh, a minimum wage or, you know, leave being mandated or things like that for, for domestic workers. So they're extremely vulnerable. Very often they're widows, but even, but even widows from upper classes or from different backgrounds, it's really difficult. And I think a lot of the, a lot of the restrictions are imposed by the people closest to them, you know, mm. family, friends, so-called so well-wishers who are judgmental, you know, and I think it's really a deep attitude a shift in attitudes that we need and I think that's um, maybe that maybe that's that's where art and culture comes in you mm. know? because th those kind of shifts I think you can for, for me you can do it by moving somebody you know yeah. it's an emotional shift that some, for someone to really get it like no you know um, mm. a person is a widow so what yeah. Yes, exactly and I think quite often as well when we're talking about house helps as well um, I feel like they've been very badly stereotyped in Hindi films quite often. Like if you see a typically like a comedy or a commercial film, you'd mm. see the the house help, especially if she's a female, you'll see her as a very sexualized um, being who basically makes these double uh, double sort of meaning comments and right. all of these things. It's often told from a very patriarchal view. But here, like what I really liked in Sir, is that you told it from a very balanced manner, which like you said as well. So, I mean, how... What did you do to make sure that it was balanced? Like, how did you ensure that that was consistent throughout the film? Uh, well, first of all, like, um, I, I'm a woman writing a woman. So for me, you know, right. it's, it's uh, automatically, I'm not going to dismiss her point of view. I'm going to, you know, see her as a whole person. And it was extremely important for me to, to figure out what this love, when you talk about love, right, what is it? To not make it... Uh, uh, sort of the sexualized uh, story about domestic help, right? Playing into all these, all the, all these stereotypes, or, mm. or, the, or you know, uh, exploitative narratives that already exist. Yeah, exactly. So um, I was, I was very clear that I, that I needed to stay away from that. But for me, it was very natural. You know, none of that was even in my head. So for me, it was really about these two human beings and actually exploring what does it, what does it mean to actually fall in love, and what does one fall in love with, whoever it is, right? What do you, mm. what, what is it? Because very often in cinema, you see a beautiful woman walk by, uh, even, even, in, even in really good films sometimes, you know? Um, mm. And there's this moment and it's the, there are music cues, you know? And then you, you're, you are supposed to understand that there was this moment, 
but so what right what is it? beyond that what is it why yeah. is it, why, why is this person the person and it was really an exploration of that as well you know through the film and, yeah. and for that just to get answer your question uh, it was really important to know both people and for both people to inspire each other and to mm-hmm. matter and for it to matter you know which is why i was sort of walking this line of how each of them influences the other it's uh-huh. he is not her savior you know no um, exactly so so i think it was it was really uh, really understanding that you know what is what is it that draws you to a person why would he fall in love with her you know mm-hmm. because she's dynamic and cool and and full of life and inspiring to him you know yeah so definitely i i get i definitely definitely really um admire that as well and i think since you are talking about the perspectives like obviously you being um a female you know writing it from a female's perspective as well i think often actually um you know and i've asked this question to quite a few filmmakers and actors as well um you know there's often this whole notion that women telling women's stories is so much more effective rather than a male telling a female driven story what is your stance on that does gender necessarily affect how or impact how effective a storyline is or how effective a film is um difficult to say i don't i don't think so because i wouldn't want to well a couple of reasons right uh, mm. first of all i think women can also be co-opted into the patriarchy and they can also play by those same rules and they have in the past and there are films made by women which are completely patriarchal you know yeah. in their in their outlook in their gaze in all of it so first of all i feel that it's, it's not necessary that gender determines that it will be you know Uh, a feminist film you know for instance or even exactly. even even conscious about these about, about questions and issues so i don't think that it's a, it's a given and and by that same token i wouldn't want to be excluded from making a film with a male protagonist because you know one would assume that i wouldn't understand that person <laughs> yeah you know? it's true I think, i think you need to be uh, it's 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 a person you know and i think that there are men who have the depth of understanding and the desire to understand and the desire to think through the the, the possibilities and that's just you know uh, so, some people are better writers than others if for for certain subjects and they'd mm. be uh, they would be able to do it like i probably would be really rubbish if i tried to write a really good action film but you know uh, it it really depends on your depth of understanding of a situation i don't think it's I, yeah so i guess i'm i'm, I'm voting for it's not gender <laughs> yeah, right okay <laughs> i mean prior to sir your earlier works um as a writer i mean be a jesse jesse koyne which can i just tell you i'm a huge fan of i'm sure <laughs> I'm sure you probably had that a lot of people coming up to you and telling you I I used to love that show. I I feel like I'm a justice somewhere. <laughs> yeah, like, so it was such a relatable film uh series yeah. I really loved it. Um whether it's that or obviously Kuch Na Kaho which was an, again another very um underrated film in my opinion. Mm. Um these the central sort of female characters uh in these works uh I guess showcase a progression of women from unfortunate or unconventional circumstances to them uh doing what makes them happy in life. in a very very simple way and effective way again i just wanted to kind of get your perspective on this is this something you consciously set out to do and how much do you kind of personally identify with these characters as well um so no i didn't set out to do it consciously because i was i mean these are these were jobs right uh writing jussie was a gig like i actually right. got, got it was one of my first i did a lot of pounding the pavement and finally i got some some work and yeah. uh and it was it was one of the only shows that i could write because i couldn't i i couldn't write the sas bahu stuff it's just not something i could relate to so what would i do there you know yeah. so it was great and it was made by tony and dia singh and they were you know we were pitching some other stuff together and you know they had they had the show and we um so i got to be a, one of the writers on the show right you know, it was not my show and anyway it's licensed from betty rafia which is colombian i believe so it mm. was you know i was just a writer one of many yeah. writers you know Mm-hmm. so uh but you know that said it was something that i could i could relate to and have fun with because it's you know in, in terms of subject matter it's something that i'm not uh, that doesn't make me angry <laughs> yeah. you know right yeah so, so in that sense you know it's nice to be able to work i've been lucky to be able to work on things where i i haven't had to make awful compromises with my soul you know uh, mm. in terms of mm. being able to tell stories that that uh, that are not uh, you know but when you're working uh, when you're doing it as a job it's you know it's the opportunities that you're that you're lucky enough to find hmm okay so you so you saw them as just opportunities of of a, as a job rather than actually thinking too deeply about the characters right 
I mean, in this case, yeah, but I think there were some there were some things that I wouldn't and couldn't do, right? Oh. Oh. So, so like there are uh, in in terms of opportunities, like if a certain kind of soap came my way, right? Mm. I, or, right. or because there's also that there are things that you that I can't write a certain kind of humor. Like there are things I just don't find funny, you know. Yeah. So I've I've been I've been on a on a, on a paid job where I was you know where the director thought something was very funny and I really didn't. And I say, you know, I don't just, I don't think this is funny, you know. So it's, it's, it's a, there's a huge gap in the, in my sensibility, and sometimes in, you know, it, it can, it can happen in the sensibility of a very mainstream director, because what they want is something very different. Mm. Uh, and I, and, and you have to have the humility to understand that, that you, you can't do everything. Mm. You know? mm. So I, I, I can't do that. Yeah. It's not just about being a snob. I can't do it. Like I won't be able to write something that's that's loud and slapstick and funny the way you want because I just don't find it funny. <laughs> you know? Exactly. No, but that's that's the thing. See, limitations often, as as people, we often think limitations is a weak thing. You know, as a weak point, but actually not really. I just think it's just a real thing which exists, and it just needs to be a, uh, accepted as a fact and taken in a more positive way, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'm really happy to not be doing any of that now. Mm. You know. I took I took a step back from it and I decided. Look, I I love writing. I really I'm really and I feel I'm really lucky to have found something that I love to do. So I didn't want to be writing stuff that made me unhappy about writing. You know, mm. I didn't want to write stuff I don't like. That uh, being in you know being in a world I don't uh, I don't want to be in. Right. So I took a, so I took two steps back and that's how actually the my my documentary happened as a completely independent. Both my films are completely independent, but my documentary was literally mm. with like no money. Like right. not like zero, you know. It was it was uh, checks were signed from my savings account for you Whoa. know camera rentals and things like that. It was just really you know, uh, my husband helped out. He was sometimes doing camera, sometimes camera and sound. <laughs> wow! <know? laughs> so it's really yeah, it's really like a little tiny production. Um, yeah. So it you know and and that but that was that was my way of transitioning and trying to really you know try trying to explore what I could do um, as mm. a director and really breaking away from. Uh, the box you know because I didn't yeah. fit in that box I didn't really fit into uh, those kinds of films mm. um, that the the, mm. the 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 very the old Bollywood let's say today things are really evolving but you know Hindi like, like commercial Hindi cinema the way it was mm. um, you know five ten years ago really wasn't something I could connect to yeah I, I've noticed there's actually films that we've liked as well growing up have been actually quite problematic as well and I've kind of come to terms with that but do you think I mean we were just talking about earlier in the interview when we just began about how independent uh, content is now being accepted and loved and consumed. Um, what do you think is contributing towards that, though? Um, is it is it suddenly that the rise of the OTT platforms and suddenly people are realizing that there's more content out there? Or what do you think is that factor which has kind of made people much more uh, excited and satisfied uh, with more independent cinema emerging? Um. I I, th I think it's the access is really important, so people can can watch it and without without a huge um, without it being very challenging. Like I I have believed I mean forever you know um, at least for the past 10, 15 years that the, the audience is smarter than than producers and and distributors and all of us you know who work in who work in the film business and think that we know better what the audience wants. Mm. They know what they want. You know they can sniff out a good film or a bad film very quickly and i think that if you trust that and if you respect your audience the challenge is only getting the film to them you know and i think even pre ott today they have access so it just makes things easier but i think if they had gotten access to films you know the films that didn't the, the good films that didn't that never really got much you know like let's say door which was which was uh, amazing you film. know but by the time you heard of it it was gone from the cinema yeah you know it never did in, in terms of numbers I, I don't know the numbers but you know, it 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 the, these films would disappear because they don't get a fair uh, chance, they don't get good show times. You know, mm. so if and and it's like it's the economics of it, right? If you have a star powered film, you can afford the marketing, you can you you get the show times. It, it's it's a whole there's a whole machinery behind it, you know. Mm. And so mm. independent films don't don't didn't were not perceived to be doing well earlier because they didn't get good show times. They could, didn't have staying power. You don't have the time for word of mouth to catch up with the film. You know, mm. um, so if you like, I'll give you an example. My documentary which was tiny, and right. I actually managed to release it independently in in one city. And okay. I, I did, and I did one show a week, 
so that I had time for word of mouth. Oh, you know? okay. And we ran house full for a few weeks oh. because because it was oh. it was it was tiny. But you know, if you have time for word of mouth, it was just one city, one thing. You know, but um, it, but if you if you if you do that and people can and, and this is it's a documentary. I mean, in India, people are normally like, oh no, I don't want to watch a documentary. You know, but you can you can still get people to to come to the cinema if they have time to to understand what they're going to watch you know yeah. to 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 get access for the word of mouth to catch up if if you if you don't give a film a chance on 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 platforms i think it, it again it i think people are getting access to things and um some of the star system is playing in again because yeah. certain films get promoted more than others so certain mm. films get lost on platforms because you don't know they exist mm. but but you have the time for word of mouth to spread you have the time for people to tell each other because the film is still there three weeks later, you know. Right. Um, so I yeah. think it's it, it's really about films having access. Absolutely, and I, and this is the thing, you know, because quite often a lot of people moan and groan about you know good cinema not working well, but at the same time, you know, you'll still have a commercial masala pot boiler that will still rank in lots and lots of money so I feel it's a bit of a catch-22 sometimes you know because I feel like the audience sometimes wants good cinema but yet they won't quite support the good cinema and sadly that good piece of cinema won't get the due credit or the due prominence it rightfully deserves so I think it can get a bit confusing sometimes there as well right um I I don't blame the audience really I think the I think audiences want um and also it depends on where, right? Sometimes mm. you don't want to watch something that's hard hitting because life is hard enough. Like right now, if you release, you know, a difficult film, people are just you may just not be in the mood to watch something that 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 brings you down. Which I completely understand. Um, so, but good cinema doesn't have to necessarily be serious or or sad, right? Mm. There are a lot of good films that that you that you want, that that still don't get an opportunity. And I think that it's really about uh, creating structures that allow for that. I don't think you can blame yes. the audience. Mm. I think you have to have, I mean, uh, um, like if you, if, you look, if you look at other countries, like because my film has traveled and I've had the, you know, the, fo- the good fortune of seeing how other people do it. Um, in France, for instance, okay, it's a subtitled film. It's a foreign film here. Um, we were uh, able to release in over 100 screens wow. and um, they did a lot of promotion before the release, but a lot of screenings, you know, and, 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 and they built up the screens uh, after the release as well you know so wow. they do previews they build they build word of mouth in advance for three months before i was traveling you know oh. doing q and a's with audiences so that people are already talking about the film when it releases and then and and they can they can hold the film in the screen you know mm. so it ran for months and months and months in, in france because mm. of that because of the way that they can hold a film in in india if you have one weekend to prove yourself as an independent film there's no time you know mm. Yeah. Yes. And I think I I like the point that you made about how people have become more aware um, and uh, people kind of know a bit more, a a bit more confident about what they want to see. Um, And I think now what's great is that Hindi cinema is now focusing on real characters, you know, characters which are not your stereotypical goody, baddie or person that you have the person in between you know you have the people who are real who are flawed um and and it's kind of uh become a lot more convincing as well when you watch it do you think it's that awareness that 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 people have mentally and um emotionally now that is kind of leading towards such characters and such films being accepted i think it's the it's it's the filmmaker's choice and responsibility or you know to to do something that they that they believe in you know, and then maybe that's the mm. shift that what people believe in today, what people care about today is shifting, at least for some, you know. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, Roina, when was the age you kind of realized that you, this was your true calling? And uh, how supportive were your family in, like, you know, in um, making sure you reach your sort of goal and your profession and uh, become the sort of writer and director that you are today? Um, I think I... Uh... I realized that I like writing. I always liked writing, even as a kid in school. I liked writing essays and stuff. But when I was in in university at Stanford in my, uh, I think my second year, I, I did my first fiction writing course, you know. And to apply to that course, basically, you had to sleep out in the quad because every, a lot of people wanted to get into the class. And the only way to get in was to get on the list. But the only way to get on the list to use, 
because you took your sleeping bag and you went the previous night to be the oh, first wow. in the line to make sure you got. <laughs> so that was how I started by uh, my, my first fiction course. And I really enjoyed it. And then subsequent courses, you had to just submit your work and, 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 and get in. Um, then I decided to do an MFA, at which point, I think that's the point at which a lot of parents may not have supported the choice, but my parents were extremely supportive because I was going to do fiction and poetry, which is not something that gets you a job. Mm. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I, I can understand. <laughs> you do a master's in fine arts in creative writing. It's, you know, most a lot of, I think a lot of South Asian parents might have said, okay, no, get a, you know, go get a real degree. Nine to five or, job. Or at least a real degree that's going to further your, your, your prospects. But my parents were very supportive. Uh, my mom is a journalist. She, she used to, she used to um, run a newspaper for many, many years. Oh, uh, wow. she, she was the editor in chief of a newspaper in Poonam, the, the only English language daily at the time. So, yeah. So, <laughs> That's um, cool. So you've kind of had your tryst, I guess, with uh, media and uh, yeah. writing properly, I guess, because of that, right? Yeah. So they've always had support for, you know, wanting to be, wanting to write, wanting to do this sort of thing. But it's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough journey. And I think it's been difficult for them to see that, you know, you know especially when I was writing in, in, in Bombay and I didn't really connect to it and I was trying to do work that I didn't understand, you know, <laughs> um, I think. But, they, but they've been really supportive and they've really supported me even with uh, the making of Sir and all, you know, through, through mm. the whole process. So I've, I've been really, really lucky that way. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think because Sir uh, is such an iconic film and uh, because it has received so much love and so much acceptance and I'm so glad it has as well. Um, what are you motivated to focus on next? Like what, what, will, what do you see as your next milestone now? Um, my next film, I, I, I'm working on it. I don't want to talk about it. Uh... <laughs> Thanks, Rowena. <laughs> 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 I can't talk about it because I, like I said, I'm really hard on myself when I'm writing. So um, okay. I, I'm never sure if if it's uh, if it's what I'm going to make or if I'm going to throw it out of the window. You know. Right. Okay. So I'm, I, you know. <laughs> I, no, no. I get, I get what, I get what you mean. It's, it's very difficult, isn't it? Because you're on that process and you don't yeah. know for certain yeah. whether you want to even pursue it or not, and you don't want to. Yeah, I, I get it. I get. I you really know, it. it's yeah. So you don't want to say something and then say, oh no, you know. Um, oh, actually, no, I'm actually doing, you know, uh, so I'm working, I, I'm, I'm writing a, and, and rewriting actually right now. But uh, yeah, I have my fingers crossed that it actually, you know, holds together. Even I have my fingers crossed <laughs> because we want to see more great work from you, Roina, as it is. I think, I think Sir has made us very utsuk to see more great uh, <laughs> stories from you and to see great uh, directorials from you. So I think on that note, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for joining me today on Filmi Shilmi. Um, I think it's wonderful because, like I mentioned, we had Dilotma, I've had Vivek, and now having you uh, on the platform, it's just it's just completely been a Sone Pe Suhaga. So thank you so much. <laughs> thanks, Anuj. Me. Thanks for having me. Thanks a and lot. Wish, and wishing you all the very best for your uh, next works as well. And I can't wait uh, to see what more Roina Gera has for us. Me too. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations as well on the film fair. Very well deserved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. Bye, Anuj. Bye, Roina. Bye.